I'm working with an Angular application that I want to roll over to React, and I want Copilot to do it for me. And I want to use an agent. In case you didn't know, the VS Code team recently released Agent Mode with GitHub Copilot, which will write code for you. It'll also check its own errors and continue working to fulfill a task. All you need to do is to give it a few prompts along the way. Some people call this prompt first coding, others call it vibe coding. Yeah, I know, I know, it's a pretty overused term, but I'm going to keep an open mind here because I want to see what it's all about. So my goal for today is a simple one. I want to have Copilot unleash its coding bots to do a pretty straightforward job, turn an Angular application into a React one, something that might take me a few days if I did it by hand. And this, by the way, is the application. It's a sample Angular app written uh, by my colleague John Papa. It has a Node.js API written in Fastify. And if you want to play along, there is a link to the code in the description below. Now, admittedly, the code for this app is pretty simple, as I have to keep things rolling. But that said, my goal with this video is to keep it real. And I think the process I've come up with should scale to applications of any size. Speaking of process, let's quickly go over the steps that I'm about to take. Now, the first step is to ensure that I'm rolling the application over, not replacing it. I'll be working in a mono repo today, and as you can see, I've created a React directory right here in the root of my mono repo. The next thing is to be sure that I'm working in a branch. Now, I've gone through this rollover process six times so far, and I've created a new branch for each try, and I'll talk more about that later. It's critical that we work in small steps, committing our changes as we go. As you'll see, I'm going to divide the agent's work into sessions. At the end of each session, I'll commit what's been done. I'm going to be converting the Angular app from outside in, meaning I'm going to start with the empty React app, roll in layout components and styling, add components, services, and finally tweak the application's styling a bit to be a bit more flashy and fun. The goal is that after every session, I have an application I can run, look at, and evaluate. Finally, I'll be using custom instructions for this project, making sure Copilot has the context it needs as I tell the agent what to do. This is also where I can put my code styles, helping to offset the chance of garbage code. All right, enough talking, let's get started. I'm going to start with a simple prompt. There's no need to type any more than this as custom instructions will fill in the blanks for me. Notice also that I'm running Claude Sonnet 3.5 in agent mode. When I submit the prompt, I wait for just a second and Copilot returns with the expected CLI command to generate the React app. Uh-oh, the generator doesn't like the name of my project, React. Hmm. But notice how the agent saw this. It can see the error on the return and it is now offering a workaround. That's pretty clever. It's creating a new project for us in the shop at home React directory, which it will rename to React when everything is done. Nicely done, agent mode. Now I've edited the install down just a bit, but here's the important part. We now have our app. Working in agent mode is fascinating, and it can also be a bit unnerving. What exactly is it doing? Well, the good news is that the agent will tell you what it's going to do before it does it, and will also summarize what it just did so you can review before you accept the changes. All right, well, it's the moment of truth. At the end of each agent session, which we're in right now, I want to be sure I have a running application that I can review. Let's pop into the React directory, start things up, and great. As I mentioned, I'm gonna create a branch to work in, and I'm gonna call mine R6, as this is the sixth time running through this. And then I'm gonna commit the changes. Why six times? Well, that's one of the fun things about vibe coding. Failure is okay because you move so fast. If things go pear-shaped, just delete your branch and try again. I'm going to talk more about this later. For the next session, we are going to start the outside-in process, copying over the CSS, layout, site navigation, and so on from the Angular app. So I'm going to paste in my prompt right here so you don't have to watch me type it all out. Here, I do need to add detail to avoid any guesses that the agent might make. I want to be sure of a few things, namely full width and height, and no other components other than the layout. Now at this point, we really need to pay attention to what the agent is telling us. We can stop this process at any time if it's off, but reading this over, I'd say the agent is on the right track. If it's not, I can modify my prompt to add more detail, 
which is how I came up with this prompt in the first place that I put right here. Like I mentioned, I did this six times already. It's at this point that things really start picking up. Copilot is creating a bunch of stuff for me using the Angular app for guidance. You can and should follow along in the chat window to be sure that things are happening the way that you want. If they're not, just undo and try again. As the code rolls out, you're bound to see some errors, like this TypeScript error in our new nav component. The agent is pretty good at catching and correcting these errors, especially if you have custom instructions that tell it to check itself, which we do. Now I've paused the video here because the next part is pretty fun. This is the error that was detected. The nav component doesn't have a class name property. Unpausing the video and it goes away because the agent detected it and just fixed it. All right, a lot of things just happened. Let's check on our progress and see how the site looks. Wow. Okay, that looks really good. Now, to be fair, you might have to run through this prompt three or four times to get the layout looking as you want. Again, just undo and try again, tweaking the prompt as you need. Okay, this session is done. Let's commit the code and move on. This session is gonna be a little bit more complex. We need to roll over the product and discount components, but I don't want the API or service logic just yet. We're going in baby steps, that's critical. If this was a bigger application with numerous components, I would roll over groups of components in iterations. We only have these two, so I think we're good to go. I'm also, as you can see, going to stub out some fake data and have a little fun with it as we go along. Once again, I'll review Copilot's plan on the right, making sure to stop things if I don't like what I see. So far, so good. Copilot is able to understand what it needs based on the Angular source code and will pull in each needed component. One of the things I love doing with Copilot is generating test data. You should be careful with this, of course, and be sure to review what Copilot creates, but I've had good luck this way. Like quantum coffee beans, pixel perfect. I love it. Now there's a lot going on with this session, which is honestly what vibe coding seems to be all about. You're waiting for the agent to figure out what you want and then watching it as it happens. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am editing this video to make it a little bit more watchable. The process that you're seeing here, rolling the components in, took about four minutes in total. It's long enough that Copilot is checking in with me to be sure that I want to keep going. I do, I'm trying to keep it real. A few minutes later and I can see that we have some errors. Now this is normal. And on the right side, you can see that Copilot is checking these errors because our instructions say to do so. And it has figured out that it's missing the router. So Copilot updated our package.json to add this package directly. It has also asked us if we want to run the package install script, npm install. And now let's talk about this. One of the issues with AI is that you have to know when it was trained. There are cutoff dates. And when Copilot adds packages directly like this, well, they can often be out of date. In this case, I can cancel out and tell the agent to install the package using npm install react router DOM and then keep going. Or I could just do it myself. Either way, this is something that you should be aware of. All right. And I let Copilot just install things with package.json. We are all done. Let's see how things look. And I'm gonna restart the dev server. <laughs> look at that. There are our components. They're kind of ugly. I mean, that's okay, we can fix it. I am happy to see that they're there though. Let's tell Copilot what we think about the design. And I have found that if you add a little pepper to your prompt, it helps. You can also give it positive feedback if you want, like good work. It seems to make a difference. All right, I'm gonna leave the browser up so it picks up the changes live. As you can see, the agent is working on the right side and it's thinking about design changes that it wants to make. It's analyzing the Angular source and it's going to apply it to the React app. Now, here we go. Let's see what's gonna happen here. It's going to change app.css <laughs> right before our eyes. Boom, that looks pretty good. I have to say, I am impressed with this. This looks good. It added some shading to the cards. Yeah, I like it. Wow, even the edit card looks good. Now, if you're wondering, 30 minutes has passed in non-edited time. This is one of the better run-throughs I've done, to be honest. Anyway, we're good with this session. Let's commit and move on. We are almost done. Now we need to wire up the Fastify API that's part of the project. It lives in the monorepos API directory, and we're not gonna change anything about it. We will, however, need to roll over the Angular service classes, so let's do that now. 
This prompt is thankfully small. The only thing I need to do is to make sure that Copilot uses an environment variable for the API endpoint so we can configure it later on. In previous runs, this was ignored during rollover and hard-coded, and I have a feeling it's probably going to happen again. But right off the bat, two service classes are added that look to be almost exact copies of the Angular service classes. That's okay with me, as long as they work. Looks like they're mostly CRUD endpoints. Create, read, update, delete. Skipping ahead a little bit, Copilot is now telling me that it needs to install a proxy for the API. And it's at this point I should tell you that I've never built a React application in my life. <laughs> I know nothing about it. So this is completely new to me. I'm just going to go with it and see what happens, I suppose. I mean, do we need this? We'll discuss this later in our code review. All right, skipping ahead again. The service classes are in. I've reset the port from my React app. Let's see if everything has worked. What are the chances? What do you think? Yeah, not very good. <laughs> this is expected, believe it or not. The problem is that Copilot hallucinated the environment variable name. I'm not sure why. It didn't take too much sleuthing to figure out the 401 error was due to a bad URL, and poking through the code, I found this problem. Now, I could fix this by hand easily, or I could vibe it out, man. Let's ask Copilot to fix it. All right, looking over the changes, and they look good to me. Looks like Copilot has renamed the environment variable and has also tweaked our product service to make sure it's using the right URL. Okay, we have, I think, a working React app. Let's go and take a look at the code. All right, look at that. We have a working React app using the API now. Let's go through everything and make sure that all the functionality is there. And we can edit, delete, list things out. Yep, it's all there. Now you might not believe me, but I promise, the total time on what you've just saw in the real world was 45 minutes. And as I've mentioned, I have edited it down so it's watchable, but seriously, all of this happened just the way you saw, and it's kind of crazy. All right, no offense to John and friends, but let's see if we can spiff this site up a bit. I'm not a designer, but I know some designery concepts, like using fee to control sizes and widths. Look up the golden ratio if you don't know what I'm talking about. One thing I just love doing is having the browser open, live reloading as the changes are made. Now, this is going to be interesting. I don't know why I asked for gradient borders, but I did. Hey, now, looks like something is coming back. Something's about to change. What's going to happen? Woo! <laughs> Look at that. Ooh, that looks nice. Nicely done, Copilot. All right, well, here is the final app. Total time spent, 53 minutes rolling this Angular app to React. I think this looks kind of cool. Best of all, it works. All right, I keep telling you that I'll go into more details at the end about things, so here we go. I did this rollover six times. First time I did it, I used only one session and let the agent do its thing from start to finish. That took about 48 minutes and turned out okay. The second time was an absolute disaster and I had to trash everything. And same with the fifth time. The other times worked just fine. In fact, the one I recorded that you just saw was my best. The point is, I spent a total of about six hours doing something that would normally have taken me, well, three days, four days, who knows. So it's almost like I'm additioning branches. If something wasn't right, well, I just commit the work, create a new branch, try it again. Now, one thing that's probably on top of your mind right now, is the code any good? And that's a good question to ask. It's also a little subjective. Let's talk about that. Like I mentioned before, I don't know React at all. Looking at this code, however, I can see what it's doing, and I consider it readable. That's just me. I would use this code. I think it's fine. But I do think we can also improve this. You don't have to accept what's handed to you by Copilot. You can always tweak, update, refactor, and change. Documenting and review is yet another step you can take when you work with agent mode, as I've been doing. Here, I asked Copilot to document the code so future me, who does no React, can understand what's going on. Here's another step you'll probably want to take, making sure what you're doing is idiomatic and will look good, if you will, during a code review. These look like great improvements. We like error checking. We like better function names. And most of all, we like more maintainability. But the question is, will our boss approve? One thing you should be sure to do is to add your coding standards, including templates, to your custom instructions. Each company has its own way. What does yours do? We'll find out, go write it down, and make sure that whatever the agent generates 
complies. All right, that's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed this video and has helped you out with your daily use of Copilot. Leave a comment if you want. Let me know what you think. And happy coding.